Hi, Screen Printers. This is Colin from Ryanet. Today, we're going to talk about the reclaim process, but we're not going to talk about how easy and wonderful it is. Today, we're going to talk about all the bad things that happen in the reclaim process. Uh, the screens that are underexposed, the screens that have locked up, uh, because you were using solvent-based chemicals. Uh, the screens that just don't want to get clean properly. So one of the first things that I want to talk about is the active ingredient in all stencil removers. It's called periodic acid, and like the name implies, it is an acid. Um, so always wear gloves when you're actually handling it. It is a mild corrosive. Some of us are more... Um, susceptible to its effects. Um, I've never had any personal uh, issues with it, um, but others will, so please know what that actually is. Now, periodic acid actually works uh, in dissolving the emulsion by breaking down the bonds that are created in the resins of the emulsion when the emulsion is fully exposed. Now that was kind of a backwards forwards uh, explanation. So what I want to talk about is briefly properly exposing your screen. Um, as we know, we always talk about using the 21 step grayscale strip or the Stouffer strip, um, but it's that little 21 step grayscale calculator that once you rinse it all the way out and you can't rinse out that step number seven, your screen is now fully exposed. Once we know that our screen is fully exposed, we know that the periodic acid is going to actually dissolve those bonds properly. That's where we see the emulsion melt off of the screen. It dissolves. Um, those are all the videos that we see of all the great and wonderful reclaiming. Look at how easy this is stuff. Um, what I want to talk about are the, are the common pitfalls. So one of them that I wanted to talk about is where we start and stop our uh, coating technique. So I'm gonna, I have one here that is definitely more of an issue. You can kind of see a little ridge here. And here you can see, trying to get it into the light properly, it's kind of delaminated a little bit. And what happened was, well, actually, let me back up a little bit and explain to you a little bit about uh, exposure. We always say, you know, step seven, as we just talked about. Well, we tend to test just in that image area square, just in here where we're actually going to have our image and where we're going to print. But up here, we don't really care about. Well, up here is where we have a thicker layer of emulsion, dry emulsion. So when we expose our screen, whether it's this way with the light underneath, the light always hits that t-shirt side first, and then it's got to travel through, and it's got to go all the way up to your squeegee side. Well, if we stop that exposure where we get a full solid step seven, we don't get the same level of exposure up at the, the thicker parts of our emulsion, so it's underexposed. That area will not break down properly when you're using a stencil remover. It's gonna come off in strips, it's gonna be gummy, it's gonna get sticky and, and just not wanna come off depending on several situations that we can be in. Um, so what we're gonna show you is the simple ways to go ahead and remove it, how to deal with it, but the essential part of this is going back to the beginning coating your screen so that you don't get that thicker section and or properly exposing your screen the first time. So we know that underexposing parts of our emulsion is gonna have it come off in strips, be uh, chunky, stringy, um, not dissolve. Uh, another thing that we can do or we can be doing within our daily routine is we can be using aggressive solvents like screen opener is the most common one out there that we all, at least our old school guys, know and love dearly. It, it cleans up everything. However, if you're not using a solvent resistant emulsion, uh, it's going to harden up your stencil itself. It's going to make it much more difficult to reclaim. So at that point, you're going to notice that it creates a barrier for penetration. While your stencil may be fully exposed, you can't get 
water past the surface of your emulsion and you can't get the active ingredient as a result past that. It's locked up. The emulsion is locked up. So because of that, we cannot reclaim it. Depending on the level of solvent resistance the emulsion has, uh, not all emulsions have that say there's various levels of solvent resistance uh, amongst the emulsions out there some have none and this is where you're going to see uh, the worst of that happen uh, there are other emulsions out there that have a lot of solvent resistance but not really enough so if you're using a really aggressive solvent like xylene or something like that you're printing solvent based inks uh, you're going to see area you're going to see the emulsion in those areas is definitely harder to reclaim and you got to work at it but you can get the emulsion off so i'm going to show you reclaiming this screen that we talked about where i have underexposed issues at the top and the bottom and i'm going to use pressure washer on the bottom uh, and compare that to using a hose pressure on the top. I'm going to do a spray application uh, of stencil remover, scrub it in, but I'm gonna let the hose application sit a little bit longer uh, and we're gonna see how that looks. Unfortunately, I don't have any solvents uh, here at Ryanet. Uh, hashtag 376, we do not sell that anymore. I don't even have a, a stray can of screen opener anywhere. We got rid of all of it. So let's go through this process and see what happens. So at this point, we can see that the emulsion is definitely breaking down really well. In these areas where I had full exposure of the emulsion, we're spawning really well. You can see these thicker areas and the little drips. They're not really starting to break down. Uh, I know in the camera it is difficult to see right now, um, but trust me, it's there. I even had a little piece of tape up there, a couple of two pieces of tape, and that's gonna actually block the emulsion from doing its job as well. So I'm gonna let that sit for a little bit and come right back. So one of the other things that I wanted to talk about is the lifespan of stencil remover, of emulsion stripper. Uh, it's something that we've all run into at some point or another, where it's, you know, if we're using a dip tank or if we're spraying on, we have some stuff sitting around and it's just not working as well anymore. Uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, all stencil remover main chemicals the periodic acid has a shelf life. It's approximately a year from the date on the label of the product that you bought. Uh, it basically starts to break down over time and it loses its efficiency and its efficacy. So if you have that kind of issue and you look at the label and say, wait, it's, it's doing fine on a spray bottle, it's possible that you added too much water to it, and it's just not as strong if you were adding water. If you're using a dip tank, it is much more possible that through the act of putting screens in and taking them out, and when you're taking out, you're taking out fluid from the tank as well that's clung to the screen. Over time, we have to add water to it. Most often, we're not refreshing with any stencil remover. Uh, so we've actually started to lose uh, stencil remover in there. The, the percentage uh, is too low, and we just need to refresh that. Um, over time, if you keep doing that, if you keep refreshing the tank, you will have, you know, quite some time, you will have some dead in there. And you should be refreshing and cleaning out your tank by every, about every six months at most anyways. I like to do it about every three months. Uh, it just keeps the gunk out of there. Um, it's a good habit to be in. So by now, we've got a lot of great breakdown. I'm gonna turn the light back on behind here so we can see this. And we're gonna see how the pressure washer does uh, in relation to the hose pressure.
your exposed emulsion. <laughs> came out just fine. Good stuff. So we can see that I can get this done with the hose, but it's gonna end up being really messy and it's gonna take longer. So I'm gonna go turn the pressure washer back on and blast this off real quick. And that is why we want to use a pressure washer and not a hose to reclaim screens that have issues. So obviously we know that we can do it with the hose, but it's definitely a lot more difficult. We let the stencil remover full strength out of the emulsion stripper sit on there. It was a good minute. I don't see the benefit of leaving it on any longer because we already knew that those areas were underexposed to begin with. And because the resins were not fully cross-linked, we weren't gonna get any more breakdown out of it. The chemical had the chance to do everything that it could, and it took a pressure washer to finalize blowing that stuff out. In the areas where you saw it stick, again, that's very similar to if you were to use a solvent to clean your screen, and again, going back to the different uh, levels that we talked about, it's either gonna take a lot uh, or it's gonna come out with a little bit of elbow grease. One of the steps that you can use if your emulsion is locked in from using a solvent is you can use a haze remover on it. The haze remover specifically softens the emulsion so that a pressure washer can come back and blast it out. In those situations, we recommend turning the screen around because your emulsion layer on the squeegee side is thinner than it is on the t-shirt side. That's because when we, clean, we, when we dry our screens from coating them with emulsion, we let that emulsion form on the bottom, creates our nice stencil, our nice gasket. So we can actually blast it off from this side because the emulsion wrapping around the, 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 the knuckles, the, the, the mesh itself is thinner there so we can blast it out. 